Okay, so for Wednesday, you're going to be reading a paper about the cellular slime mold Dictyostelium discoidium. Uh, it's an amoeba that is called a social amoeba, as you'll see from the life cycle here that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, and so we've got a really cool paper for you guys to look at uh, that has a really interesting kind of altruistic behavior that it's showing for these amoeba. Uh, it's really, really interesting stuff. Um, but I want to give you a little background first. Um, and really the reason that we're thinking about Dictyostelium at this point is one of the things that we're thinking about as we think about how, you know, life evolved is where did multicellularity come from and what were the requirements for organisms to become multicellular. And Dictyostelium is really interesting because it can be a single-celled amoeba or it can be all of these amoebae that are living together uh, as a slug or fruiting body, okay? Um, this multicellular um, group. So it gives a really nice kind of case study for how multicellularity might have developed. Let's take a look at this life cycle and then I'll show you guys a little video of how this works on a plate. So Dictyostelium discoidium it's this amoeba, okay? This amoeba can grow and divide, okay, through mitosis. This amoeba, when uh, it gets starved, puts out a signal to other amoebas in the area, okay? And the signal causes those amoebas to aggregate, okay? So they start to aggregate and they form this kind of lump, aggregating lump. Um, you can see this like if you're growing these on a plate and ultimately a mound, okay? And then that mound develops further into a slug, okay? And this slug is actually motile. So this slug can crawl, uh, you know, maybe a few millimeters or, or, or a bit further and then uh, the slug will stop and create this fruiting body, okay? And from this fruiting body, uh, from this part of the fruiting body here, the sorus amoeba cells will burst out and begin the life cycle as single cells again. Okay, what's interesting is that if you look at the slug, there's some group of cells on one end of the slug that are prespore cells, um, and these cells wind up in the sorus, and these are the cells that actually get to propagate. These cells here are pre-stalk cells, and so they become the stalk of the fruiting body. This part of the fruiting body is not viable, okay? So it's really interesting because what this implies is that these cells are sacrificing themselves for the benefit of these cells, okay? And we'll talk a little about how that works, what kind of arrangement they have to come up with in order to have that sort of altruistic behavior. So that shows differentiation, which is really cool. It shows that these cells are differentiating and becoming different than these cells. Differentiation is a process that cells go through in development. Um, so as your body's developing, right, we all start as just a, an egg, right, that's fertilized by the sperm cell. And that single egg cell becomes all the different types of cells in our body, okay, through a process of differentiation or specialization. And that same thing is happening here. So very interesting stuff, right? Um, so let me just show you what a video of this looks like um, so that you'll be prepared um, when the paper that we read here uh, starts talking about some of these things. Okay, so here are a bunch of single cell amoeba moving across the plate, eating through the food source. You can see them start to aggregate and form these fruiting bodies. So you can see a slug, slug, aggregation here. See how they, all of these cells are coming to this one point. And 
the reason that these dictyostelium do this is that they eat bacteria in the leaf litter. Um, and when so when the food source gets depleted, they form these slugs and then these slugs migrate up higher and higher in the leaf litter to get to the fresher uh, leaf material that they can eat, right? Uh, where there's potentially more bacteria for them to, to eat. 